30 Bible session. You will meet on Zoom. And if you need more info, please see Anita Watson. This is the week for Vacation Bible School, VBS, beginning on tomorrow through Friday from 9 a.m. until the noon hour. And Christina George is going to uh, come and give us uh, in some more info on our Vacation Bible School. And everyone is invited to invite others and to participate as much as you can. So, uh, Christina, if you'll come now. Good morning, everyone. Vacation Bible School does start tomorrow. I'm very excited. Um, we've got a lot of volunteers. We already have um, 60 children that are registered and coming, so we want to um, be ready for them. Um, there are three things that I want to ask those of you that are not going to be here during the week to do. Um, one of them is to grab a prayer card. They're on the fellowship table on the outside there. If you could be praying um, at home for our VBS, this is a simple prayer to be praying. And then also, I have a wristband to remind me, this says watch for God. So I want you guys throughout the week to be watching for God. And the third thing is our mission project is a food drive. So throughout the week, if you can be gathering um, your food items, non-perishable items, canned food, box food, any kinds of food that you can bring in, we will have a donation table. So next Sunday when we go through our VBS and um, talk about what we did and invite uh, their families and their children to come, there'll be a place to put those. So if you can be collecting those items, our Sunday school class did decide our goal would be 1,000 food items. So we really got to kick it in high gear and get up, gather our food items. Um, and the other thing that we're going to be doing, um, the children have already collected about $200 toward another $1,000 gift to um, a gift of two um, mating cows or, um, through Heifer International. So that's another goal. So we'll have an opportunity to do a gift, um, a cash donation for that, toward that, and also please bring in those food items. Um, and we're looking forward to an amazing week. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are honored that we have today sharing this service with us, Gabe Wiggins and Shelly, I'm sorry, Shelby Petty, is that correct? Let's show them our appreciation for their being with us this morning. <laughs> Gabe and Shelby. And if you are looking for a church home, this is the place to be. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for coming this morning. Aaron is back all the way from Poland. Let's welcome him back home as well. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Once again, we are thankful that you have joined us today. Laurie, thank you for decorating this whole place for VBS. Let's give Laurie a hand. Let's go now, serving our God, an awesome God who loves us so very much. Amen. We could all stand for the call to worship as we're able, please. 
Lord, you've been kind to your land. You've changed Jacob's circumstances for the better. You've forgiven your people's wrongdoings. You've covered all their sins. Selah. You've you stopped stop being, being furious. furious. You've, you've turned, turned away, away from, from your, your burning anger. anger. You, you the God who can save us, us restore us. us. We will, will be mad to you forever. forever. Will you prolong your anger from one generation to the next? Won't you bring us back to life again so that your people can rejoice in you? Show us your faithful love, Lord. Give us your salvation. Let me hear what the Lord God says because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him so that his glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God. Making a road for remain standing for the first song. Amen. And what a great joy to be back with you this morning. And my big thanks to Tom and Melissa, Melissa Fleming and Tanner and his friends for helping cover while I was away. Good to be back with you. Let's worship and sing together God of grace and God of glory. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church story, bring her but to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. For the facing of this hour, lo, the hosts of evil round us scorn thy Christ, assail his ways. Fears and doubts too long have bound us, free our hearts to work and praise. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the living of these days, for the living of these days. Cure thy children's warring madness, bend our pride to thy control. Shame our want and selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Lest we miss thy kingdom's goal. Save us from weak resignation to the evils we deplore. Let the search for thy salvation be our glory evermore. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, serving thee whom we adore, serving thee whom we adore. You may be seated. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for this week's Vacation Bible School for VBS, we want you to always seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and ask God's guidance and direction upon us. We always want to call upon the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ. So we have a prayer now for VBS, and I invite all of you to pray this together. Together, most gracious and loving God of all creation, you have entrusted us with the sacred message of your grace, justice, and love. We humbly seek your guidance that we may be custodians and learners together. 
You are in our midst today and forever, and for this we are grateful. May all who serve in the Vacation Bible School do so in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who come under our care. Bless each one gathered this week, and may we be channels of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite the children to join me up front this morning. Got one more coming. Two more coming. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I know. That's Joseph's sister. It's scary up here. Oh. All right. How is everybody this morning? Good? You look so tan. You've been outside in the pool, huh? No? You've been outside, though? Yeah. All right. Well, knock, knock. Boo. Boo. Boo who? Why are you crying? <laughs> knock, knock. Tank. You're welcome. <laughs> knock, knock. Orange. Orange, you glad this is the last knock, knock joke that I'm going to tell this morning? Yes. Yes, because they're awful. They're supposed to be awful. So Jesus did not tell knock, knock jokes, but he did tell stories about knocking. And the Bible tells us about a time that Jesus was talking about knocking with his disciples. And we'll hear that story in just a minute. So one day Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray. He told the story of going to a friend's house late at night and needing help. So you keep knocking until the friend answers, right? And the friend will help basically to make sure that you go away, but the friend is still helping. So the point to that was that Jesus told the disciples that prayer is a way to ask for help. It's a way to knock on the door and ask God for help. He even taught his disciples a way to pray, and it's the prayer that we all know it is the Lord's Prayer. And I would like to say that with you guys this morning and with all of you guys this morning. So can we do that? Can we turn our praying hands on? All right. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to see me today. This morning I'll be reading from the 11th chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 13. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, uh, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, and don't let us yield to temptation. Then teaching them many more, uh, uh, them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a, a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine which has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out 
from his bedroom. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though you uh, won't do this for the friendship's sake, if you'll keep knocking long enough, he'll get up and give you whatever you need because of your uh, shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. To everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Bill. I also want to say thank you to Denise for always bringing donuts. Denise, thank you for helping me gain more weight each Sunday, okay? And thank you, Bill, for bringing, for always making a fresh pot of hot coffee. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Now, brothers and sisters, let's seek the Lord's guidance. Let's find out what it is the Lord has for us this week and for the weeks to come. So let's bow together. Eternal God, our Father, we now give thanks to you for allowing us to gather here on another Sunday morning to uplift and to give thanks to your holy and righteous name. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us from day one, and you will always be with us. We are never alone. We are so thankful that you are God and God alone. Help us to hear what it is that you have for us and what you are calling us to be about. Most of all, we thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who loves each and every one of us. So now, Lord, open up our hearts, our ears, our eyes, our minds, all that you have given us, that we may receive your holy and powerful word with power and holy majesty. Anoint us, consecrate us for the living of these days. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today I want to share with you from this thought. You've seen the commercial about milk that says, got milk? I want to talk about got need, got help. Got need, got help. Consider this for today and for the days to come. When you get up in the morning, when you get up in the morning out of bed and you face the day before you, what do you say to yourself about your hopes, your dreams, your vision? For that particular day. So when you wake up, you face the day before you, what do you hope to accomplish that day? When you look from the very beginning of the morning 
until the end of the day. What do you want to happen? Because you lived. What do you want to happen? Because you were alive and that you lived. What difference do you want to make in your life? Why are you here? <laughs> Why am I here? What difference do you want to make in life? Do you wake up and go, oh, today is going to be all about me? No. Do you say, well, today is going to be all about me, just like it was yesterday and the day before yesterday and the day before that and so forth and so on? No, I hope not. Or do you say today, I'm going to make a difference in someone's life? I'm going to help someone in need. I'm going to make a difference. Do you say to, to, uh, today I'm going to lift someone up in prayer? I'm going to pray for somebody. I'm going to even pray for that person that has caused division, separation. I'm going to pray for even that person. Today I'm just going to let the Lord use me in his own way. Today I'm going to try my best to help someone in need. Now Cornerstone and brothers and sisters of the faith, you really don't need a reason <laughs> to help someone. You don't need any particular reason. You just help someone because he or she needs help. Kindness. Kindness is like a muscle. It gets stronger the more you use it. Kindness. It will improve your mood just by, by being kind. It will improve your mood. It will improve your disposition just by being kind. It will improve your perspective in life just by being kind. It will improve your outlook on life just by being kind kind. By golly, it will improve your attitude just by being kind to others. Tennessee Ernie Ford had a song out years and years ago. I can't believe I used to listen to it. <laughs> To Tennessee Ernie Ford. But he had a song out that said, Others, Lord, yes, others, let this my motto be. Help me to live for others so that I may live like thee. Tennessee Ernie Ford. JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can you do for your country? George Herbert Walker Bush said, we need to be a more kinder, a more gentler nation. You see, I named a Democrat and I also named a Republican, so I'm doing okay this morning, okay? Be kind to one another. Kindness. Even soul singer Aretha Franklin back in the 60s said, 
All we need is a little bit of R-E-S-P, E-C-T. Just a little respect. The Beatles, <laughs> all the Beatles had a song out in the 60s. Help. I need somebody to help. Now, I'm afraid that's about all I remember from that song, but it was about helping others. The Beatles. Help. Got need? Got help? What's one of your greatest needs? What's one of your greatest needs? How much help are you willing to give someone in need? You and I need the Lord. <laughs> you see, one thing I have complete confidence in, and that is that we serve a God who is awesome, so kind, so gentle, so concerned about us, a God who loves us so very, very much. And that he cares for us. Remember the old song of the church that says, Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. And that's a fact. God will take care of us. Because he knows that we have a need. And that we need help. And God is the source, cornerstone. God is the source of everything we need. You see, don't put your hope in jobs alone. Don't put your hopes in money alone, in houses alone, in investments, in the government. Your looks, how you look. Your popularity. No, because all of those things can be taken away. Just like that. Can be taken away. But your relationship with the almighty God can never, never, nunca, it can never be taken away. Never. God loves us. And there's not anything that you and I can do about God's love for us. We can't do anything about it at all. He just loves us. Sinners though we are. Wretched creatures though we are. He just loves us. He just loves us. Every morning I wake up, God just Gives me a big old hug, <laughs> hug, and says, "Rick Hawkins, you old booger bear, I still love you," because he knows I'm in need, and you are in need, and he just loves us. His love is endless. His love is, has no bounds. And it's not based on any response from us. It's not based on, on any time of the hour, any time of the day. Not based on any time of the night. He just loves us. And he knows our need. And God wants us to be there for one another. To help others in need. God wants us to be there for one another. He wants us to encourage one another. To build one another up. And not tear down. 
He wants us to support one another. To pray. That's what the Lord's Prayer is about. To pray for one another. To pray. To remember. To lift one another up. That's what this passage in Luke is about. To lift one another up in prayer. To be there for one another. Not just for those who like us. Not just for those who, who return a favor to us. But to lift one another up. Got need, got help. So what's, what are the results of helping to meet another person's need? I just have a couple of brief points I want to uplift about helping meet one another's needs and what may be the results. First of all, It will connect us with another child of God. Or at least for the moment. Helping someone connects us with another child of the king. It connects us. It binds us together. See, in our in the United States now, as all of us know, we are so disconnected. Mass shootings, political upheaval, inflation through the roof. We're so disconnected. But if we encourage one another, if we have confidence in one another as we do in Almighty God, it connects us with one another. It connects us. It draws us together. Connects us. Like the song says, draw the circle wide. No one stands alone. We'll walk side by side. Got need, we need to help one another meet that person's need. Another point is this. If your kindness, if your compassion, if your help is passed on, it can multiply and multiply and multiply. If your kindness is passed on. And that's how it is with God's love. The song says, once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. And all you want to do is just what? Pass it on to someone else in need. So you pass it on. You help meet someone else's needs. Another point is this. It makes you, when you help someone in need, it helps, it makes you feel better about yourself when you help someone in need. Not that you said, oh, look at me. Look how wonderful I am. No, not that way. It just helps you feel better about yourself. Helping someone else in need may improve your mental health. It may improve your mental health by helping someone in need. It may improve your spiritual health health. It may help you come alive. How many people have you seen walking around 
dead. They're just walking. They're just dead. They just haven't been buried or cremated yet. They're just walking around dead. Helping someone in need may, may revive you, refresh you. It may release you from being shackled in your own self. So many people are shackled. And they've shackled themselves. Helping someone in need may set you free. It may give you a new release on life. Pastor Zan Holmes, many of you know, who is now probably in uh, 80 something years of age, was a preaching professor at Perkins School of Theology, SMU, and also longtime pastor of St. Luke Community United Methodist Church. Zan Holmes used to tell the story of, of when he was a little child. He had a dog, and it, now this is not a funny story, so don't expect anything funny. Said he, he had a dog that he kept in the backyard of his house. And he had to tie the dog up to a tree, chain the dog to a tree to keep the dog from run, running loose and getting out. And Zen said the dog would just go you know, around and around and around in circles because he couldn't release himself to be free. And Zen said he, he looked out his back window So he just felt sorry for this dog. So he said he w went outside one day and unshackled his dog so the dog could be free. He let the dog loose, unshackled him. And then Zan said when he, he went back in the house for a while and he looked out that same window he said, and that dog was still going around that tree in circles as if he was still shackled. God has set us free, Cornerstone, to help those in need. And many of us are still going around not knowing that we have been unshackled and set free to help others in need. Going around the same old tree when God has set us free. Another point how we can help those in need, got need, got help, is that our nation, our society, is in kind of a mess right now. You know that. It's in a mess. Don't make it messier. <laughs> Don't make it messier. Some of the pains we're going through seem so monumental, just like our vacation Bible school theme, seem so monumental that it's easy to feel down and forget about others. Never forget about others. Never forget about what happened on 9-11. Never forget about what happened in Buffalo, New York. Never forget about what happened in Uvalde, Texas. Never forget about the mass violence, innocent people. Never forget others. The need is so great. And then finally, we often focus on how we've been hurt in life. How we've been damaged in life far more than we've been helped. Don't drown in self-pity. Don't 
Don't drown in self-pity. Don't drown in, oh, woe is me. No. Reach out to others. And when you think of others, it will boost your energy. Boost your energy. What was it, a couple of Sundays ago? The sermon was on, I'm all shook up. And remember, I did the Elvis Presley <laughs> dance, you're all shook up. It will unshackle you, and you won't be shackled or tied down. You'll be set free. And your problems will seem so minimum when you help someone in need. I know you got milk, but got need, got help. Think of others. Think of others. Lord, others. Help me to live for others, Lord, so that I may live like thee. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, this next song is a new one. <clears throat> we introduced it a few weeks ago during offertory. Uh, so I would invite you to uh, listen and remain seated. And as you start to learn the song and feel comfortable to sing along with us this morning. Worthy of every song we can ever sing Worthy of all the praise we can ever bring Worthy of every breath we can ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we can ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up your eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build 
build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Amen. 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 Thank you for that beautiful song. Thank you very much. We come now to share our joys and our concerns. As we say each Sunday, we share them with one another and we always take them before Almighty God. Cornerstone, let's remember the Art Fagan family, one of the longtime members here at the church, Art died several days ago and we are waiting to hear of any uh, funeral dates or memorial dates. Again, that's Art Fagan. So let's lift up the Fagan family and our hearts. Let's take them before Almighty God that God will comfort and bring them to a time of peace and courage. Again, that's the Art Fagan's family. We also want to lift up uh, Ellen Fung who has been ill, very ill, Let's pray for her. And Virginia mentioned that uh, Ron Jackson is not doing well, so we lift up Ron, and I know there are so many others who are sick as well. Also, let's pray for our brothers and sisters at the First Presbyterian Church in downtown Dallas. They had to uh, go back to uh, online services because of a bomb threat today. So they canceled their in-person services because of a bomb threat. So let's remember the members and pastor of the First Presbyterian Church in Dallas. Laura, do you have any? Yeah. Uh, from Ellen Cecil, prayers for her nephew, uh, Robert. He's having surgery on Wednesday. Amen. Uh, Jennifer Cecil, prayers for her nephew. Okay. So we lift up Ellen's, uh, Ellen Cecil's nephew, Robert, who's having surgery, and we pray God's healing mercies upon Robert. We continue to pray for Jacqueline Kelso, and you mentioned her on last Sunday, so we continue to remember her in our prayers, and you will pass that on to her. Okay? Other jaws and concerns? Yes. James Williams is back in the hospital. Chris? Who's that now? James Williams. James Williams is back in the hospital. Pneumonia. Thank you, for pneumonia. Thank you, Chris, for sharing that with us, and we pray for James Williams, his wife, and his family. We pray that uh, he will be healed and made whole. Again, that's James Williams. Thank you, Chris. Yes, Anna? Okay, Anna. Thank you, Anna. If you'll let John know that uh, our prayers are with him, that he will also be healed and made whole again. Thank you, Anna Taylor, for sharing that. Let's pray for John and his family. Yes, Bill? Chris Chris Rickett, yes, he had uh, COVID, and he was out last Sunday and out today. Let's pray that uh, he will be healed. So, Brother Rickett, please know that we are praying for you, that you'll be back. And while he has been out last Sunday and today, Christina George has filled in for us. So let's express our appreciation to her. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Christine. Other joys and concerns. Yes, Marsha. Your son, his wife. Okay. So, Marsha, please uh, let them know that we lift them up in prayer. Your family. Thank you. Other joys and concerns? Yes. Uh, Christina? Yes, ma'am.
thank you, Christina. We lift up Stephen, that he will be found and be found safe and sound. So please let the family know that we re remember them. Other joys and concerns? Okay. That's right. Bill will be having his second eye surgery this coming week on Wednesday. And Bill, we pray that you will be made whole, that you will be able to see far down the road, sir. Praise God for that. Virginia, we're always excited when you're in church. Praise God. Praise God. And on last Sunday, we celebrated, okay, um, with joy and thanksgiving to God, June Couples' birthday, which was maybe a week or so ago. So we continue to give thanks to God for your life, June. Praise God. It's Pastor Cooper on today. So we have uh, Pastor Cooper on now, and let's bow together, and Pastor Lois Cooper will lead us in the pastoral prayer. Gracious God, we come Gracious to God, you this Sunday, to you as, we as, Sunday often, as we do often, and as we hopefully and do, as we hopefully each, do day, each day, knowing that you guide, knowing us, that you direct guide us, us, direct us, that you love us, that you love us, us and ask to love us you to love you our by our actions and our, deeds. and our deeds. Be with us as we be touch with us the as we others, touch the lives of others and bring. And them bring closer to them you closer as we to you as we seeking are to be close seeking to, to be close to you. For you are our for you guide, are our guide, our love, our love, our spirit, our spirit, our hope, our hope. And we are and grateful, we are grateful. For all you are for, for us, all you are for and us, all you make and of all us, you make of us. us your love, your love. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cooper. Now, church, it's time for the offering. And as you well know by now, there are several ways to participate online. And you know how to do that uh, by now. Text it in, drop it in the mailbox. We have a safe box. If you want to put something in the offering plate in the back, it is a safe box. And there are other ways to participate in returning to God financially, that which God has so very kindly given to us. So it's a joy to give back to God that which the Lord has given to us. What a joy it is to give to God. Amen. Blessings for 
Praise the all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise the source of all our good. Praise Jesus Christ whose power of will. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, as we close our service today, we're going to be singing. Oh, wait for it, wait for it. Every time I feel the Spirit. And if you thought I was ready, you're wrong. i got to make sure I'm in tune. That's close enough. All right, let us sing joyfully together. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain my Lord spoke, out his mouth came fire and smoke. All around me looks so shine. Ask my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River runs right cold, chills the body, not the soul. Ain't but one train on this track, runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Always a powerful song. Praise God. Thank you again for being here today in the sanctuary and those of you who are watching us from home. Let's remember VBS, Vacation Bible School, starting tomorrow through Friday from 9 a.m. until the noon hour. We invite you to invite others to be a part of our VBS. To Gabe and to Shelby, please know that you are always welcome back to Cornerstone. I see that you all don't live far, so you can even walk to church. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So again, please feel free to come back anytime to any of our activities. Thank you for being here. Now, brothers and sisters, we go out as witnesses, sharing the good news of the gospel with others. Receive now the benediction. Yes, Lord, others, help us to live for others that we may live and be like you. God need, God help, and you have called us to meet the needs of one another. Often forgetting about ourselves, our needs, and looking out for the needs of others. Thank you for looking out for us. And now, Lord, grant us your peace, a peace that no one can give us, a peace that no one can take from us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.